This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. In a massive vote of confidence for making cars in Britain, Nissan announced it will invest nearly $1.4 billion in the UK. When the UK left the European Union, it looked like it was the beginning of the end for the British motor industry. Nissan talked openly of leaving, Honda already announced it's on the way out, and Toyota said it was considering it. But Nissan's announcement of new investment suggests it's going to be around for years. By the way, a lot of that money goes towards making what Nissan calls e-power hybrids. That uses an ICE to charge the battery, and the car is powered by an electric motor. But there's no plug. Only the engine charges the battery. Nissan says e-power allows the use of a smaller ICE engine and battery, yet gives customers the instant response and low-end torque of an EV. And that e-power system will be available in the all-new Nissan Qashqai, which is also sold in the U.S. as the Rogue Sport. But in Europe, it's Nissan's best-selling vehicle. In fact, it's one of the best-selling vehicles in Europe, period. Nissan just unveiled the third generation, which has a crisper, sharper angled look and is built on what Nissan calls its CMFC platform. The headlamps are thinner, the wheelbase is longer, and you can order 20-inch wheels. Rear seat passengers get more knee room, and there's more luggage space in the rear. Yet the overall length of the vehicle is about the same as before. One notable feature is a 10.2-inch head-up display. While it gets the e-power system, it will launch with a 1.3-liter mild hybrid, and it goes on sale in Europe this summer. First, it was a shortage of semiconductor chips. Now, it's a shortage of natural gas that's causing production disruptions. General Motors and Volkswagen announced they're halting production for a few days this week at its plants in Mexico due to the gas shortage. The company said production will return to normal once supplies are back to adequate levels. Audi also said it will adjust production levels at its plant in Mexico, depending on the availability of natural gas. It was a down day on Wall Street for the automotive industry. In fact, it was a down day for the global automotive industry. The Autoline stock index was down overall for car companies, suppliers, and retailers. But there was one notable exception, QuantumScape. Shares shot up nearly $16, a gigantic 31% increase for the startup that announced a breakthrough yesterday to make solid state batteries for electric cars. And speaking of startups, we've got a great auto line after hours coming up this afternoon with Jim Taylor, the CEO of ELMS or Electric Last Mile Solutions. So join John and Gary for some of the best insights into what's going on in the automotive industry. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Remember how EV startup Canoe stripped its skateboard chassis of all its unnecessary parts, dubbed it Skate Cart, and took it racing in the desert? That was so cool. Now Lordstown Motors is doing something similar, but it's going for real racing. It's taking the EV skateboard for its endurance pickup and entering it in the San Felipe 250. 
an off-road endurance race that takes place in Mexico. And it should be a good test for Lordstown. It estimates the endurance will have 250 plus miles of range from its 109 kilowatt hour battery pack. A loop around the San Felipe 250 is roughly 290 miles. Obviously with only the skateboard and no body, it will be lighter and have more range. But what role will the terrain and temperature play? It's going to be interesting to see how Lordstown does. Hydroplaning can be dangerous when it's raining out. That's why Easy Rain, which is based in Italy, created the first active safety system to prevent hydroplaning. Bosch and a tile design also helped with the development and recently tested it on a production vehicle for the first time, an Audi A6 wagon. Here's how the system works. A controlled jet of water is blasted out in front of the tires to break up the water layer on the road that the tires can't dissipate, which restores grip. The injectors are automatically activated by software when a sensor recognizes that the vehicle is starting to hydroplane. The system weighs five kilograms or about 11 pounds and uses fluid from the windshield wiper tank. The companies plan to perform more tests over the next several months. Speaking of improving safety on the road, Ford of Europe now offers illuminated safety panels for the back of its transit and custom vans. It says the panels make the vehicles more visible compared to reflective tape, especially for vehicles coming around a bend in the road. They're operated via a switch mounted behind the driver's seat. Right now, the panels are only available in the UK, but Ford is looking at making them available in other European markets as well. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. And by SAP Industry Cloud for Automotive. Tesla is making the Model 3 and Y more affordable in the U.S. The base Model 3 now costs just under $37,000. $1,000 less than before, while the base Model Y's starting price is just under forty grand, two grand less than before. But while the standard models get a price cut, Tesla is raising the price of the performance versions of the Model 3 and Y by $1,000 each. Traditional automakers are ramping up their EV launches, so it's not surprising to see Tesla make its models more affordable. But this should also help boost sales for Tesla. It just launched the Model Y in South Korea, which is available in three trim levels. The standard range model carries a starting price just over $54,000. At the same time, it's also bringing the refresh Model 3 to South Korea, which has been available in the country since 2019. And it announced plans to add 27 supercharger stations and eight service centers across South Korea by the end of the year. General Motors and Volkswagen already announced they're going to work with Microsoft to connect their cars to the cloud, and now it's Bosch's turn. The world's largest supplier is going to use Microsoft Azure to help develop software-defined cars, and it wants to offer it to automakers for testing prototypes before the year is out. The idea behind using Azure is to update the software in cars more quickly to provide owners new functions and digital services. And since Bosch's customers include just about every car company in the world, it will undoubtedly make it available to anyone who wants it. The Honda HRV is going from looking like this to looking like this. The next gen version of the crossover, which is also called the Vessel in some markets, just debuted and is much more coupe like in appearance. The grille looks like a big departure from anything we've seen from Honda before. The other big news is that it's only announced a hybrid powertrain for the HRV. It pairs a naturally aspirated one and a half liter four cylinder engine with Honda's two motor hybrid system. Both two and all wheel drive are offered. As for the interior, designers cleaned up the look and note how the air vent appears as one giant piece, which really draws your eye across the entire dashboard. The new HRV slash Vessel will launch in Japan first this April, but the rollout to other markets hasn't been revealed yet. Well, you all passed our barn find test with flying colors. If we were back in school days, 
I might have accused you all of cheating because I didn't see a single wrong answer. Normally, we at least get a few. But we like the detail that Oliver Vitamaki provided. He says it's a, quote, Austin Healey 3000 BT7 Mark I, 1959 to 1961, assuming it has the original engine. Well, there you go, Alejandro. There's the answer to your mystery wreck. Thanks to everyone for showing off your classic car knowledge. But that brings us to the end of this show. Thanks for watching.